In a quiet, picturesque town nestled among rolling hills, a chilling secret lay hidden beneath the tranquil facade. For years, residents went about their lives, unaware of the sinister truth that lurked in the shadows, the dead that lived amongst them. It all began when a mysterious old man named Edgar moved to town. His arrival stirred whispers among the townsfolk, for he seemed to have an uncanny knowledge of everyone's darkest secrets. Some said he could predict the future, while others believed he communed with the dead. One fateful night, a group of curious teenagers decided to investigate the rumors surrounding Edgar. Armed with flashlights and courage, they ventured into the forest at the outskirts of town. There, they stumbled upon an ancient overgrown cemetery hidden deep in the woods. As they explored, they discovered that many of the gravestones bore the same date of death, strange considering the cemetery had been abandoned for over a century. The teens couldn't shake the eerie feeling that they were being watched. Suddenly, a cold wind swept through the cemetery, extinguishing their flashlights. Panic set in as they heard faint whispers, like voices from beyond the grave. Terrified, they ran back to town, vowing to unravel the town's dark secret. Their investigation led them to a decrepit, abandoned mansion on the outskirts of town, a place known as the House of Shadows. It was said that Edgar had lived there for generations, and the rumors suggested that he had discovered a way to communicate with the deceased. The teens entered the mansion, guided by flickering candlelight. As they delved deeper into the mansion's labyrinthine passages, they encountered ghostly apparitions and heard mournful cries echoing through the halls. At the heart of the mansion, they found a chamber filled with countless candles and an ancient leather-bound book, the Book of the Dead. The book contained forbidden knowledge, including the dark art of necromancy. It was said that Edgar had used this book to bring the dead back to life, binding their souls to the town for eternity. Realization dawned upon the teenagers that the town's residents were not what they seemed, walking corpses trapped in an endless nightmare. Terrified and desperate, the teens searched for a way to break the curse. Armed with the Book of the Dead, they sought out the spirit of Edgar, hoping to confront him and put an end to the town's sinister secret. Their confrontation with the vengeful spirit of Edgar would test their courage and wits in a battle against the forces of the supernatural, the dead that live amongst us. Serves as a haunting reminder that sometimes the most chilling horrors lie hidden in the most unsuspecting places, waiting to be unearthed by those brave enough to seek the truth, no matter how terrifying it may be. A few years ago, when my daughter was nine, we both experienced the most terrifying night of our lives. To give some context, my husband and I had just gotten divorced, and I was struggling to get by as a single mother despite the awful circumstances. At the time, I was managing it the best I could. I found night walks to be a great way to clear my clouded mind and think in a more positive manner. On this particular night, the stress of life was really getting to me, and I desperately needed a way to escape, without giving it much thought. I stormed out of the house and began walking. There was a local park not too far away from my house, so I thought I'd walk around there for a little bit until I felt better. My daughter was at school the next day, so she was already in bed. My walks usually lasted no more than a half hour, so I'd often leave without telling her. We lived in a small neighborhood that bordered the park, so I liked walking around there. For the most part, the temperature was dropping that night, so all the rain was turning into ice, which made it very slippery. I couldn't have been gone for more than 10 minutes when I got a notification on my phone from the Ring doorbell app that there was motion detected at the front door. That alone was enough to freak me out, but I tried to think of why somebody would be standing there on our front porch this late at night. It was too late for solicitors, and I wasn't expecting anybody, so I opened the app on my phone to see who it was. The images on my phone still give me chills to this day. There was a man. 
He was wearing a white t-shirt and shorts. I watched as he paced back and forth, almost as if he was scared. He kept looking behind him towards the street, then back at the camera. Knowing my daughter was inside sound asleep, I knew I had to talk to him to see what was going on. Trying my best not to sound creeped out, I said, hi, can I help you? I don't think he was expecting to hear my voice, let alone any voice at all. He snapped his head around and put his face right up against the camera. He whispered, please help me. They're coming. Hearing that made me completely freeze, and I truly had no idea what to say. So many questions raced through my mind. Why did the guy need help, and why was he at my house? I was at a loss for words and didn't reply to the man. I started running home, all while watching the feed from the camera. The man continued to pace back and forth, seemingly becoming more and more restless. Then, once I was a few minutes away from home, the man started screaming at the camera to be let in again. I gave no response, hoping he'd give up and leave. That's when I started thinking that he was on drugs because he leaned into the camera again and kept whispering, they're coming. It became more and more apparent that he was delusional, and it didn't look like he was going to be leaving anytime soon. I now know that I should have done this sooner, but I called the police. I continued watching the feed as I spoke with dispatch, filling them in on my strange situation. They told me they'd have officers there within five minutes and advised me not to approach my house. As badly as I wanted to sneak inside from my backyard, I knew that I could not only be risking my life, but my daughter's life as well. If the man saw me trying to get in and attacked me, he'd have the key to my house and my daughter would be left completely vulnerable. Then, out of the left corner of the screen on the camera feed, I watched a black SUV slowly pull up to my house and stop out front. The man at the door took notice of this and let out the most terrified shriek I've ever heard in my entire life. He turned to the door one last time and pounded on it as hard as possible then took off running down the street. The car followed him, but after that, I obviously couldn't see anything else. By the time I got back to my house, the police were pulling into my driveway. After talking with them, I sent the footage from the doorbell camera and they told me to call them back if anything else happened. Well, that was three years ago today and I've still learned nothing. The man very well may have been on drugs, but he was definitely being chased by someone. Not knowing what happened that night kills me. I can't help but wonder why the guy was being chased, and if he's even alive today. I'm not sure what would have happened if I had been home at the time and answered the door. After talking with several people and reading similar stories online, it sounds like it could have been a trap. However, there's also a chance that his life really was in danger, and the person or persons inside the car really could have had sinister intentions. I don't like to think about it, though, because I can't help but feel guilty. I'm just happy that my daughter and I were safe. I've still never told her about it, and to this day I'm not sure if I'll ever find out what truly happened.